You know, it's a crazy, mixed-up world out there. But in here, it's happy and healthy. Welcome to the Michael McAuliffe Show with your host, Michael McAuliffe. For the next 60 minutes, we'll be talking with doctors, newsmakers, financial experts, and a host of interesting people all about living happier and healthier lives. The phone lines are open at 702-731-1230. That's 702-731-1230 or toll free one 866 820-5528. Now, let's bring on the host. Here is Michael McCullough. Hey, everybody in Nevada. This is not Michael McCullough. This is Jennifer Solis. And I'm filling in for Michael uh, McCullough. Today, we have Tasha Heath from Southern Nevada Watchdogs. And we have Kurt Dukoch from We Can Wellness Education, Cannabis Advocates of Nevada. And like I said, I'm Jennifer Solis. And for the next hour, we'll, we will be talking about the watchdogs and what they do in Nevada. Hi, Tasha, how are you? Great, thank you for having me on. No problem. Um, could you start out by telling everybody what the Southern Nevada watchdogs do? It, you know, it, it doesn't sound anything like canines. <laughs> no, we don't have anything to do with canines. Uh, we do have a little watchdoggy on our, our site. But um, what we do is Melissa Letourneau and I, she is my partner, we're founders, and we started a group last year to watch the city and county agendas. It's kind of expanded into watching all kinds of things in Clark County now. Um, anybody who calls us for help, we take the time to listen to them and just if we can help them, do what we can. If we can't, then, you know, pass it on to somebody who can hopefully help them. But um, yeah, we watch uh, every by bi monthly there are uh, city council meetings and county commission meetings and we just try to watch what's coming up on the agendas if we see any items we try to tell people that would want to be aware that that's on the agenda or we try to get groups um, you know activated to fight certain items so um, lately we've been watching some court cases too and CPS whistleblower and some HOA issues and things like that but um, we kind of are Janes of all trades and watching watching everything that we can that has to do with um, corruptness. We just want to protect um, Clark County's liberties as much as we can. Sure. Some of the most um, some of the more high profile stuff that I saw that you guys do. Um, you were out at uh, county commission and, and city council talking about the no new taxes for cops. Yes. Um, um, and you brought quite a lot of people to that one. Yes, we had to f fight that one three times. And if you count at one meeting, they did two different items that they wanted to pass on it. So really, we ca we fought it four times. But um, in the beginning, I think we had maybe 15 people show up and then we just pressed on. Um, the county kept pressing on, wanting to, to pass this more cops tax. And um, we felt that we weren't against more having more police officers, but we were against our tax money being used for it when they're not, the county is not budgeting, Metro's not budgeting. And they wouldn't give us a fiscal audit and they kept having the chances to hire um, police officers within um, the past few years, but they passed that up. So we felt like, you know, if they really want it, they need to find it in their budget and not come to the people of Clark County asking for more money. They've spent um, astronomical amount on this radio equipment that doesn't work. Okay. <laughs> and um, many other things. So yes, in the end, at the, the last meeting for the more cops tax, I think there was over 50 people there. And I know they got hundreds of emails. So that's great. That's great that you guys are watching this. Um, watching what's going on in in our in our Southern Nevada area. Um, uh, one of the other more exciting cases that I saw you guys you guys on was the drones the no drones in was it no drones in southern nevada or just in nevada in general where was that at it was at city council and what it was is um we actually just kind of happened into that agenda item this was before we started watchdogs really and we were there for the ndaa resolution that daphne lee with panda of southern nevada was presenting so we were there backing her up you know we believe in backing up people so um, we went and we were looking at the agenda and here it is make uh, Nevada one of the six uh, 
test sites out of the United States. And so we got up and um, spoke on it. I think there was at least five of us who got together and spoke on that. And we held it off that day, but they came back in two weeks and passed it. So, Wow. So the drones are allowed in Nevada. It's a drone testing site. And um, they say that it is for, help me out here, Melissa. They say it's not going to be used for government or whatever. It's supposed to be a um, commercial or non-commercial. Uh, so No, what do they call it? Commercial industry, business, right. stuff like that. But you know, what's interesting too is I've spoken to someone, I know someone who works in um, uh, the, the Fusion Center and he works with the Department of Energy Counterterrorism. And uh, okay. I spoke with him and he actually was had mentioned to me that anybody who's thinking of using drones for non, you know, police uses is just delirious. You know, like that's really the only thing that they're going to use. It was Department of Defense and all that stuff. And they're, the, the bill that they, the, the, that they put together strictly said that, yet everything that they were talking about was um, private, private use, private business, things what like that. What in the world did they, did they propose that it could be used for in the commercial industry? <laughs> I think they said agriculture was one of them. Agriculture, because we have lots of fires, that, yeah. um, uh, rescues out at Red Red Rock, things like that, which we're totally okay with those types of things. What's interesting too is you know that the, what they're going to end up doing with that, and they've, we've seen them do this with a lot of things, is they come through and they say, the fire department, for instance, has been you know something they've been doing a lot with, and they say, hey, the fire department's going to be we're doing search and rescue disaster preparedness. Oh no, and that, false and, flag stuff. Well, you know, and then what ends up happening is that that becomes a cover, so to say, or like you know a way to sneak this stuff kind of through under the guise of preparedness and disaster recovery. So basically, the government's using fear to manipulate <laughs> the people. Goes not a new story right surprise surprise yes yeah exactly <laughs> exactly um so southern nevada watchdogs uh also uh the no new tax the the drone issue or have you guys been keeping an eye on the medical marijuana issue um and what have you guys been doing with that go for it <laughs> um well we were when when it would come on the agenda i would let uh you know we can and Thank you. um other people involved in the medical marijuana um, movement, I sure. would let them know about it. Um, I tried to go to the first few meetings, but um, I we felt like that's something that you guys had a handle on. <laughs> so we back you when you need us, and we'll always like tell you if we miss something, but you guys are on top of it. So um, other than that, we just uh, – I personally uh, am – well, Melissa is too. She's very pro medical marijuana, also. But um, I'm pro legalization. Yeah, she, we're we're pro. If you're an adult, whatever you want to do with your body, as long as you're causing harm to no one else, we don't care. I don't see how you could possibly say that we could drink, but you know you can't, you know, smoke marijuana. I mean, that doesn't make any sense, really. No, it really doesn't. Except that you, when usually when you're smoking marijuana, you don't gamble a lot. Or <laughs> hurt anybody. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was actually down down by the courthouse because I, I do a lot of work at the courthouse and I was walking to the courthouse and someone outside stopped me and he said, you know, excuse me, you know, are you a registered voter? And I said, yes. And he said, um, do you believe that the citizens of Clark County should have the right to vote on whether or not we allow medical marijuana? And I said, absolutely not. There's just no way. And he said, well, why is that? And I said, well, because, you know, the Constitution basically spells out that that's something that we should be allowed to do. We shouldn't have to vote on it. You know, I mean, that was my opinion, but he was like, okay, well, but you know, that's not the way it's set up. I'm like, yeah, okay. So I ended up signing his petition to allow us to vote it on it. But you know, the point is, it's like, we shouldn't even have to vote on these things. There's certain things that, you know, like fluoride in the water, we shouldn't be allowed to vote to put poison in the water. You know, I mean, that should never even be an issue, shouldn't be a question, you know, the county shouldn't be involved in that, you know. No, and most people aren't aware that fluoride in the water is considered toxic. Um, and if you don't have a fluoride filter on your tap water, you're, you're drinking this. Bathing. And it, bathing in it mm -hmm. yes that's true and not only that it's been it's been linked to what uh, higher instances of cancer um bone cancer thyroid disease obesity mm -hmm. it affects your pineal gland and they've actually found too from that documentary that you showed me which is a really good documentary that you know they found that as far as the epigenetic epigenetics go there are alleles on your genes that if you are um, hispanic you have an additional allele on your gene and if you are black you have two of these additional alleles on your gene that make you more susceptible to um, what do they call it? Absorb fluoride into your body. So if you're actually a minority, minority, 
um, mm -hmm. <laughs> then you are that much more likely to absorb it and be affected by it. So. Well, don't they say that also that fluoride's uh, linked to uh, lower IQs in, and lower birth rates, um, increased fertility, in, yeah. increased SIDS, uh, mm -hmm. lowered fertility. Um, so there are, there are a myriad of things that are linked to fluoride in your water that you may not be aware of. Um, so thank you guys for watching that too. <laughs> <laughs> so what are, what's, some, what's coming up for the Southern Nevada Watchdogs? What have you got going on? I know that we've been just trying to get it together lately. There's just, you know, it gets very overwhelming very quickly. We were really work, working on the fluoride issue. We kind of kind of kind of came to a, a brick wall on that a little bit and it slowed us down some other stuff. So as far as the city and the county go, we're actually trying to regroup and find a better way to actually tackle some of these issues because we feel that going to these main meetings, while important, and we will continue to do that, are, are not the best way to tackle these problems because when you show up, they're they're done. Melissa, they've been in the works for a year. Melissa, you are absolutely correct. Yeah. Um, I found out uh, I found out a while ago in politics these meetings are just per se meetings. Oh, yeah, completely. Um, that most of the work or most of the lobbying or most of you know the talking into or payoffs or whatever else happened without us being present. Correct. Yeah. Correct. And and that's why you know they say are are we in compliance with open meeting laws? Yes we are yeah. but they don't what they don't say is yeah i had a meeting with this one last week and this one yesterday and this one just gave me a, ca a campaign contribution and you know you know i i remember when they when we were up there to talk about uh, medical marijuana in um the city of Las Vegas, mm -hmm. they went on for an hour about how McDonald's gave everybody free breakfasts and yeah, these the children free breakfasts for an hour. You mean the ceremony before they even start the meeting? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And no, know, and, it's painful. And <laughs> not only that, then they then they went on and were talking about a sandwich shop that was going to be in their, in their building the, for an hour hour the jimmy and then, johns and, and they're then, all looking for and that we yeah and they're all looking for and <laughs> we had people from out of town that were medical cannabis experts that were lawyers federal lawyers ready to speak on the issue and they and they totally shut us down no no yeah, we, we, we are not here city council is really yeah. bad about that they will and they, they give you the one minute and it's you know they'll it's shut bad. you down completely i mean like they they do we want them to speak i don't think so at least the county they kind of usually you they know, we'll let yeah, they'll appease us a little bit. You know what I mean? They'll give us three minutes, and they'll usually let us talk on, on pretty much anything. But at the city, man, they they don't want to hear it. Yeah, you know, it it was a little bit different when Oscar, uh, Oscar was the mayor because I went to several different city councils, and he it was just it was very relaxed. It was open. Did you have was, cocktails? <laughs> Showgirls. I wish. I wish. It, you well, know. Now they do. Now they do uh, coffee with the mayor. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, no, they used to do. Yeah, it used Oscar. to be cocktails with the mayor, but now, now since uh, <laughs> Carolyn's in charge, it's no, coffee with the mayor. I was going to say I went to several uh, coffees with the mayor with Oscar. Six o'clock mm. at night, coffee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hangover coffee. coffee. That, that's one thing at at the city council. I'm not a person for banning anything. I believe if you're an adult, you should make those decisions on your own. If you want the fluoride in your water, go buy it. If you want the GMOs, fine, go have them. You know. Um, but don't force it upon other people. But if I could ban one thing, I think it would be those those stupid awards and proclamations at the the city right. council and county Photo meetings. Photo ops, yeah. Because it's all just it's like a huge waste smoke. of time. It's a huge waste of everyone's time. Or you know what? If they want to do it, wait till the end of the meeting. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, they, no, they got to pull everybody in there in the beginning. It's a big show. They get rid of everybody before they do any business. You know, I mean, it's yeah. really ridiculous. It's a little dog and pony show. That, that's because you know when they give the. You're right, Melissa. You're absolutely right. It's a dog and pony show, and everybody comes to those little those little shows, and then they exit, and then they go, oh, okay, now down to business. Okay, this is how we're gonna rape you on your city. Taxes yep. now. Pow. Totally. Yeah. Totally. Oops. <laughs> you know what's really funny about that as well is uh, I'll never forget. Remember when the county commission actually had the high schoolers and stuff? They had the children come in every now and then and sit next to them. So they get the feel mm -hmm. of what it's like to be, you know, in city government or local government. But then they dismiss them like within an hour. And it's like, no, right when you're getting to the good stuff, it's like, okay, you know, you don't want to see this stuff. Go away. You know what I mean? It's like, no, this is what they really do. Did you want to know what they do? Yeah, you know, I mean, whatever. Just forget whatever you're going to learn in civics class the next, you know, five years. It is nothing like that. Exactly, exactly. That's what I was going to say. Your civics classes, they they don't they don't mirror that that type of experience. And mm -hmm. you're right when they when they get to the juicy when they get to the meat. 
They, they dismissed the kids. They, you know, and here's another thing that cracks me up is I was reading the RJ the other day and um, there was a an opinion call, column in there about, I don't know if you're aware of this or not, but the Betsy Fretwell, the city manager, just got a raise. You know, and she hasn't had a raise in like two, three years or something. And there was actually an editorial in the RJ talking about how, you know, normally we would complain about this. You know, the, the private sector hasn't gotten a raise. It's been a rough economy for everybody. But you know what? She warrants one. She deserves one. She hasn't had one in two years. And you know, you know how much she makes? Over $200,000 a year. <gasps> so 234 or 250 something is what they raised it to. And it's just like, so we make this little editorial, what, to, to give cover to these people? You know, yes. the, the mayor wanted to raise it to like 290. Yes. You know, the, that's insanity. That, well, that is insanity. And, you know, and, and that's the other thing that. Uh, Why that do we need a manager to run the city? What do we hire you for? Yeah. That's, my per, <laughs> that's my personal pet peeve. One of my personal pet peeves is just that they are giving people raises $250,000 $250, to manage the city. And then they have a staff also. Yeah, everybody. And, yeah, and those people. Have, yeah, so so we ha we elect these lo local officials that are essentially front people. They do nothing but what the staff tells them to do. So why don't we just hire the staff? What's going on here? Why do we got to pay for the public relations person that does makes no decisions that we supposedly makes decisions? You know. Well, if you look at it, if you look at it by election, they've paid for their seats. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, because you know how much it costs to run a campaign. It mm -hmm. costs a lot of money to run a campaign. So in reality, those city councilmen, uh, mayor, everybody, they've paid for their little seats. Mm -hmm. And and so and then now they've got a staff that 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 can serve them. And you know, the staff makes a lot of money and it's well, like Well, yeah, and this, the, it's the a scam. point. The point of the staff too is that uh, what do they call that uh, uh, agenda is called congruent not congruent, but you know, um they keep the agenda consistent. the same. Can't, the, you know? the consistent, you know, like so they have this agenda that never changes no matter who we who we elect mm -hmm. because we've got the staff that's already got the agenda in line. Uh, uh, what's it, what's that called? There's a word for that I don't remember. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know. Continual? No, it's something else. I'll, I'll think of it. It'll come to me. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, uh, you know, and the the one thing that I'd like to talk about, I didn't get to talk about on our show. I I, I do Nevada Cannabis News on Tuesday, but um, reporters and reporting. Ugh. I have been asked to do several different interviews and I do the interview with whatever channel it is and and I know how to do interviews and so at the end of the inter interview they say oh we're just going to get a few shots of you standing mm -hmm. there and then they can ask you questions and pump you and ask you questions and pump you because they want that you didn't give them what they wanted when they the camera was on. same question three times you know throughout the whole thing. Yeah like, and then and then when I go to the lowest common denominator of explaining it that's the one they show. Yeah. The one that looks like da -da 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 -da. <laughs> and you know and they ask me for my opinion I tell them my opinion and then the Don't, whole front yeah. of the commercial or I mean I mean the whole front of the news piece sorry the whole front of the news piece was a commercial for somebody else yeah. and I'm at the end going this is bad dirt yeah and I feel you know and anymore it's like I am afraid just to do an interview with people because I I just need to say what I'm going to say and shut up and when they and then when they start talking to me afterwards I'm going to say the same exact thing in the same exact way yeah. 20 times if that's what's needed mm -hmm. because I I feel like I have and they been just won't set even up. they just yes. won't even use that. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like <laughs> that, yeah, that happened. They'll have with, somebody else talk over you and, and show your face talking like <laughs> Yeah. Well, that's what happened with Dana Gentry. When I went on that show and I started talking about and I started talking about the Michael McCullough issue and I started talking about about um, cannabis in Nevada, I think my I think my comments were too intelligent and they were like, you know what, this is not who we're pandering to here. This is not we're trying to not trying to make intelligent people think. We're just trying to make you know people be afraid. Where, where do you think the media is on the cannabis issue? I because I, I'm not sure where it's like the RJ stands. I mean, it kind of seems to go back and forth. It, like, where do you, where do you think they stand from your? Well, I think the agenda is now being pushed to uh, openly accept cannabis now that the United States government has patents on it and they're planning on moving in on it. Big um, business. When big business said they they're ready to move on it, the the now the media is following suit because we all know that they're just media that they're just you know puppets for the government right um and so the media is now pumping you know positive cannabis um issues um everybody's jumped on the cbd bandwagon which CBD, is one of the i'm not familiar with that 
Oh, that's cannabidiols. Um, cannabis it has several different components in it with THC, uh-huh. uh, THC, A, CBDs. Um, so there are like several different components in it. And they, and they have isolated that CBD is the one that stops seizures and can cause apoptosis in some cancers, m- meaning it just basically ruins the cancer cell so that it can't advance itself. Wow. And so everybody's jumped on this CBD bandwagon because CBDs don't get you high and they don't make you they don't make you feel euphoric and so everybody's got this fear now that oh i don't want my i don't want my kid to get high well i'll give him adderall though right right <laughs> you know uh you know you know i'll give my kid adderall because he's got add and the doctor says it's okay but i don't want him to be high yeah, yeah. we wouldn't want to have a side effect that makes somebody feel good no. right no. <laughs> well and and it doesn't dumb you down or take over your your mind certainly does those, not those like SSRIs, antidepressants yeah yeah ssris are huge in in our country we're the only country that allows the propaganda for the pharmaceuticals businesses on commercials like we do other mm-hmm. countries don't allow that do you remember when that started no it was in the 90s wasn't it like late 90s i think it was i was gonna say late 80s early 90s i don't know i distinctly remember the first time i saw an ad for for a medication and i had to be maybe 13 or 14 that's what i'm thinking and i remembered because it was stuck out in my mind like whoa that's odd because really it's like so what are we taking the doctor out of the equation here? Now I can just go to my doctor and say, hey, I want some of that. Well, you know, at the yeah. end of those commercials, That's it says, ask your doctor if this may be right for you. Mm-hmm. So it's like, then what are we doing here? Shouldn't my doctor be telling me if I need something? Well, you know, the other thing that they don't mention, or, or I'm not sure if you're aware of, that the pharmaceutical companies send doctors on vacations. Mm-hmm. For the amount of drugs, things like that, and pay them outrageous amounts of money. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. There are certain doctors, because I was, you know, with the um, being sick and all, I I felt like the guinea pig of the doctors. And you you kind of are dumbed down when you, you start the process and you're like, okay, I should believe what they say. And then after you're like getting sicker and sicker and sicker, you're like, hold on, something's wrong with this Someone picture. doesn't know what he's doing. Yeah, I was on 56 different pills a day. And every, what? Yeah, everything was like, for this and then you have a side effect for that for let that, me give yeah. you another pill mm-hmm. they just keep stacking keep, them on keep going and when i had cha-ching, real issues or real cha-ching. problems they're like no it's okay let's just do this right here you mm-hmm. know and sign over another prescription and that's how they continue because so many believe that their doctors know best and they don't research it further and it's really uh, you know i've long said that everybody should be their own best yes. advocate um right after i had my baby um i put my, my a baby up for adoption and the doctor wrote me a prescription for antidepressants and pain pills in in the hospital and and i said well what's this antidepressant one for and he said well you know many women have um hormonal issues after they have the baby your hormones are returning to normal and they when they'll have depression issues and you know and you're putting this baby up for adoption so um you you're susceptible to depression so you might you might just want to fill it and 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 he'd already put the signalman on there and telling me what to take and i handed it back to him and i said i said I really don't want this. There are some things that people should go through so they can heal. Yes. yes. And, and, you know, and he said, well, just, you know, just fill it and have it in your cabinet. And you know what he told me to fill it is because every time I fill some yeah. prescription that he gives me, he gets points. Ching, ching, yep. uh-huh. ching. <laughs> exactly. And so, you know, when I handed it back to him, I said, no, thanks. If I, if I think I have these issues, I'll talk to my counselor. Uh, but thank you for your concern right because you know since when did we you know we're such a sad society that we really think that you know taking another pill is going to heal you magically and it's like you know pain is there for a reason you know i mean do you have to deal with life like you have to deal with it because it's not going to go away you know what i mean that that's true across the board i think that's part of our issue too is we're on all these drugs that stop us from feeling and then everybody's like what's wrong with society why are we so disconnected well because we've, we're being told to be disconnected between the TV and, told, and the, yeah, yeah, to be disconnected and not feel, not go through the regular emotions of life. It's crazy. And learn how to manage them. Yeah. You know, I think that our youth is going to be really, unfortunately, 
messed up from that. Yeah, I mean, I mean, if children aren't taught coping skills, mm -hmm. and if you and if and if you don't have coping skills to teach your child, then where are you going to get these? Because they don't teach coping skills in in school. Um, mm -hmm. They teach you to sit down, shut up, learn what we're telling you, not not the reality of the situation. Learn what we want you to know. Um, history history always baffled me in school because I I knew you know, different things that had gone on. My dad was uh, in military intelligence for over 26 years. And, you know, and, and hearing different things that are going on and how media spins it compared to what it really is, it, it really taught me that media has not my best concern in, in you know, at they all. don't at all, at all. And, and you guys are there kind of telling everybody, hey, <laughs> pay attention. Be you guys' own best, you know, advocate for, for your for your mental health, too, for sure. And I also think I think one of the most frustrating things that I run into is that, you know, I'm, I'm 29, you know, I'm almost 30. And, you know, I know people my age and, like, in their 20s, you know, those are the people that are going to really matter someday. You know, not the rest of us aren't, right? But, you know, no. like, the, the future tomorrow is going to be in the hands of, you know, the people who are coming and trying to connect with them with with what what's going on to them and you know I, I how do you get someone in that age group to just you know to, to get a clue that they, that your future is being decided for you you know how do you want to like why how, you know how do you get through to these people you put a post on Facebook <laughs> <laughs> tweet it. Oh, yeah <laughs> tweet it I mean you know I don't know what it is if we have to find some way to brand it as cool you know like are we missing the branding are we missing the marketing what are we doing here because you know how do we get through to these people I mean they're stuck in either TV music dating you know culture pop culture it's just one of those things how do we because you know what that's who we have to reach it will exactly and and all of these stupid reality shows teach a vacuousness in mm -hmm. our society that that this is something to pay attention to when i see a reality show on tv i'm like why are you why do you care about what this purple haired freak is doing yeah. this isn't reality how can you, even you call it entertainment you don't you don't have we don't have a hundred thousand dollars to, uh, to spend on a handbag so how can we even connect with this freaking idiot mm -hmm. on tv yeah. and and what they and what they're selling is disconnection it's materialism it's materialism consumerism, yeah. mm -hmm. consumerism and they and they're yes. teaching people that oh getting drunk and getting out of control is cool and has no consequences yes and has really no consequences mm -hmm. you're right um a panty shots may be cool <laughs> yeah but you know and, and so these reality shows are not reality shows i would call them non-reality shows because nobody i know lives that life right. nobody or, or, or has the circumstance that they've been set up with you know because a lot of times they say hey hypothetically we're gonna give six people like you know a house to live in and da da da, da. or you know you get like the duck dynasty you know i mean is that even a reality show i i mean it, that's from what i from what i understand i've been totally scripted i mean none of this stuff is it you know pawn stars is scripted you know yeah. i guess it's like come on people who doesn't think that these things are scripted you know i mean do you really do you really don't think that's reality tv right i mean come on you know but they do uh, well, it says reality. It says reality title. on it. Yeah, just like just like it said just like it says, you know, fresh bread or, or you know, all natural ingredients. Or Federal Reserve. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> must be federal. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, it must be good for us. It must be good for us. Okay, we're coming up on a break and um, we'll join you in a few minutes with Southern Nevada Watchdogs, Melissa Luterno and Tasha Heath and Kurt Dukoc. I'm Jennifer Solis and we'll be right back. Research studies have consistently shown that pet ownership results in longer, happier, and healthier life for the owner. If you're like me, your pets are definitely members of the family. So when I take my dogs in for a grooming, I want to make sure that the experience leaves them happy and not stressed. That's why my puppies go to Doggy Doo. Located in the Albertsons Shopping Plaza on the northwest corner of Warm Springs and Eastern, Doggy Doo offers a friendly, low-stress environment for your pup, and they always come back looking good and feeling happy. 
Doggy Do's owner Val has been grooming dogs professionally for 20 years and takes a special interest in building a personal relationship with the doggies she grooms. Call Doggy Do today at 702-260-3500 to book your appointment for your treasured companion. They're open Monday through Saturday from 9 to 5 and Sundays by appointment. Doggy Do features select brands of premium food, doggy fashions, and accessories you won't find at the typical big box store. Call them today at 702-260-3500 and see the difference a caring attitude makes in your pet. Doggy Do, a tail wagging experience. Have you been struggling with weight loss? Tried program after program just to have the weight back again? Then you need Dr. Ivan Goldsmith and TrimCare Medical and Weight Loss Center, Las Vegas' leader in medically supervised weight loss programs. Dr. Ivan Goldsmith, a board-certified physician who has been the leader in medically supervised weight loss in Las Vegas for over 20 years and has treated thousands of patients who've experienced incredible results. TrimCare Medical and Weight Loss Center is so confident they can help you. They guarantee you will see at least 5% change in total body weight loss after 60 days or your money back. That's right, 5% loss in body weight guaranteed. Trim Care is not the cheapest, but it's definitely the best solution when it comes to results. Trim Care's office-based pharmacy will serve all your weight loss and hormone replacement needs. Try the program that everyone else has tried to copy. Call Trim Care today at 702-878-8888. That's 702-878-8888. And ask about the Trim Care $50 new patient summer special. Wear trim care. They said it would never happen. They were wrong. Las Vegas Hemp Fest is here. October 4th. All ages with live performances by Burner. I party like a rock star. Let the Ben's fish tail all out the window. I got it off a of fish scale. Cypress Hill Sin Dog. <laughs> Nappy Roots. Marlon Asher, also playing New Kingston. Potluck, a surprise performance from the LBC. And 25 more rap and reggae artists, speakers, and comics. Tickets available at Painless Wayne's Tattoo Shop and at the LasVegasHempFest.com. October 4th, the Las Vegas Hemp Fest. Brought to you by Dr. Reefer. Hello, everybody. This is Jennifer Solis, and I'm hosting for Mike McCullough on the Mike McCullough Show. Uh, joining me in studio today is Kurt Dukosh. Tasha Heath and Melissa Luterno from Southern Nevada Watchdogs. Woohoo! Watchdogs in the house. Um, we were just talking about all sorts of all sorts of interesting stuff and uh, no new cops tax and et cetera. But I'd like to move on to the wiretapping issue because you know what? I know I've been listening to. I know somebody's <laughs> listening to me. I mean, not just right now on the radio, but I know somebody's listening. NSA's gotcha. Hey, you know, it's funny. Didn't you hear that uh, thing about the NSA? Someone's, someone had said something to do with the Russian airplane that went down. It was on Fox News. Somebody had actually said, people will be so thankful for the NSA now because you better believe that they're listening to all the communications right now between, you know, the Ukrainians and the Russians and the Americans. and what, For your safety and the safety of your children. And every other children's <laughs> country, country's children, I guess, you know. <laughs> Yeah, um, Nevada has ranked the top state in um, the most requests for wiretaps, and um, I guess it says ninety-five percent of those were were for drug 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 crimes or whatnot. Um, but that I have a problem with because we're we're impeding on people's privacy and their constitutional rights for a victimless crime and. You know, how, how far do we take this? We have IntelliStreets downtown. I don't know if you know about that. What's IntelliStreets? Oh, Tell us. oh boy. Okay. Like, we fought this last year, but it was like... Nobody really... Melissa and I. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I got really heated over it. I don't think anybody else really cared as yeah. much. It came through with the fuel tax. It was actually tacked in with that. Um, the IntelliStreets uh, were... It's a system. It's a grid that, that they are putting in that is uh, intelligent infrastructure. It listens with audio. Um, it's supposed to have eventually... 
um, sensitive, like emotion sensitive lights so that they can save on power and energy and things like that. But the, the point is that they have cameras and they have audio so that they can literally just have, you know, Big Brother in the sky everywhere on our, on our street lamps and stuff. Not only that, they can um, send out signals to your cell phones and take over your cell phones and send out the government propaganda when they're ready. And, yeah. um, and we, we approached Tina Quigley on that and she just, she did this, these are not the droids you're looking for. <laughs> <laughs> she totally did. Yeah, she was all like, what are, you, what are you talking about? You know, she's like, look, you might have had me with the other stuff, but don't don't go to IntelliStreets. Like, don't, what did she say? Don't, don't, you know, because it was supposed to help the efficiency of traffic as well. So they always tack it into something that's useful. You know, I mean, like, we're going to make the 35% more efficient. You know, we're going to save carbon taxes and stuff like that. It's, and, you know, and that's, and that's just, we got in a car accident last year where somebody ran a red light and we were going through a green light and they had their friends in the car behind them and then they called their friends from around the corner to swear that we were the ones that ran wow. the red light yeah they weren't and even on the scene they and and the cops were the, the cops weren't there and they came up acting like we were gonna lie they told kurt if you lie to us we're gonna take you to jail and i said you know what there's a camera right up there you you get that information from that camera and you can see what happened and they said oh we don't have the, those cameras aren't, aren't they don't have access to the to the information i just found mm -hmm. out from one of my police friends and um he said that those cameras they can't even use them against you like for the tickets and whatnot red light tickets uh -huh. they can't use them so um they don't tap into the cameras to see anything so i really so don't they don't understand tap anything why... to see anything useful is what you're saying R right <laughs> useful or for us you know <laughs> yeah just to, to monitor us. traffic is that literally all they're for i believe so like that you cannot use them in court they I don't video for... record is theoretically I know IntelliStreets do downtown, but I don't think our street signals do yet. Yet, yet. 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 is the key word. Because what they do want to do with the IntelliStreets on the end, like Melissa was saying, mm -hmm. is have them on the highway also. And we'll have those cute little black boxes in our cars that will, or our license plates that they could just scan and pick up everywhere you've been, RFID. everywhere you're going. Um, if you've sped, if you've traveled traveled too much, perhaps you vehicle mile travel tax. That's where that's going. Yeah, it per, perhaps they you have to use put the your infrastructure. Car too much. Yeah, they have to put in the infrastructure first before they can actually, you know, put the bill through. Because then the bill will make perfect sense when you know the legislation comes through. Because it's like, oh, we already set this up. Oh, we already have a billion dollars in it. So you know, we might as well use it. Yeah, all we gotta do is flip a switch and turn it on now. That's how fluoride was. They paid, um, the federal government paid us, what, like $5 million to put the system in before we even got to vote on it. And then they're like, oh, but it's already here. <laughs> well, dismantle it. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, the, the Intel streets are definitely really frustrating because it's difficult to, you know, it sounds so um, paranoid when you try to tell someone yeah. that this is what they're doing, even though you have got the paperwork. Here, look, it's on the agenda. This is what they're doing. You know, I mean, it, and they just like, no, they're not doing it. They're not doing it for that reason. They're not gonna do that You're, with it. You guys are just being paranoid. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're not they out to hurt you. Right. Yeah, yeah. Why would you that, put that foil that. hat back on? <laughs> yeah, and you know, I'm, and and then more and more, all of this stuff that we said in 1984, and then it, and oh no, well they're not going to do that. They're not going, and they're doing it. The the radio con, uh, frequency RFID, chips, yeah. RFID chips, our soldiers have them in Afghanistan that go on special missions so that we can spot them after after if they get you know taken mm -hmm. or anything like this. Is it implanted in their skin? Yes, yes it is. And sadly, you know, our military are guinea pigs. My aunt was, um, I, I don't know, it was, it was a long time ago, like 30, 40 years ago. But um, she was, when they were doing the LSD testing on the military, mm -hmm. she, she was one of those people and she never really came back. <laughs> you know? Really? Because they, they did, overdid it so much. Well, yeah, the CIA was involved in that too. Mm -hmm. What was that operation? It, was, it wasn't paperclip. MK Ultra? Oh, oh, MK Ultra. Yeah. It was MK Ultra. Uh -huh. Paperclip is actually when they brought, when they the brought the all the Nazis over. over. Yeah. 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 And we're the ones that are paranoid, right? <laughs> well, you know what? It's just crazy all the things that they've declassified. You know, yeah. that, that it's like, hey, did you know the government wanted to do this, do you? You know, it's like, did you know that they wanted to do the, you know, Operation Northwoods, you know, Cuban Missile Crisis? Like, yeah. all the, it's like, no, you, did you know that? You know, yeah. I mean, how can you, see if your kid lied to you? over and over again would you trust them i mean you know and, and yet not not trusting these people that lie to you all the time is, i don't know it's crazy to people i guess well exactly and you know and you know and they come in and they say that they're they're going to oh we're no we're going to do this intelligence um we're going to do this um 
what what is it like a, a study not a study but we're gonna do this drill we're gonna do this drill and then somebody goes nuts and shoots 21 people in a in a movie theater come on it's like where is this real is this is this really real or is this guy been or is this guy been brainwashed to go shoot people well yeah and if you're talking about the the aurora shooting i mean yeah. you know that guy was uh, the son of a really intelligent scientist military scientist yes he, he was, was involved in in a a what do they call it, it was a um, mind control program, studying mind control. And that's like, they've said that, that's admitted that he was high level, you know, involved in military research on that. And that's just kind of too convenient that, you know what I mean? Now all of a sudden he says that, you know, in prison, he's like, oh, I'm under mind control, right? I mean, you can't make this stuff up. You know, you really can't. It, it's, it's one of those things where all you have to do is look and you'll find it. But if you're just gonna passively watch the news, you're not gonna get the information that's actual. You know, I mean, you have to actually look for it. And Or if you're just gonna passively watch the reality shows. Yeah. That's, I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't feed you any form of reality. And then when you tell people, you know, this is what's going on and they look at you like you're crazy. About 10 years ago, I have a friend named Jeff, Jeff. I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna say his na last name. We used to go camping all the time and everybody sitting around drinking and talking and stuff like that. And he would, some of the stuff that would come out of his mouth, I'd be like, people would be like, oh, Jeff's just crazy and drunk. And, you know, I would go home and I'd look it up or I'd look up the articles that he'd tell me. And I was like, you know what? Jeff is just very intelligent and he sounds like a nutbag to people because he's so intelligent that he knows exactly what is going on yeah. the first time he said that he 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 said in a group of people hugo boss is a nazi i was like <laughs> i was like <laughs> no oh. nazi he's, yeah and i'm like <laughs> i'm like jeff what i mean like they're they're nice clothes jeff what are you talking about you know you don't know da, da, da. you know and he'd grump about it and i and i went and looked at home and Hugo Boss did design the uniforms for the SS. And and then uh, an actor came out like maybe four years or five years afterwards, Russell Brand was at a fashion week and he got thrown out of fashion week for saying the yeah. same thing. And, and it was, I, I looked up, you know, right after Jeff told me this, I looked it up and I was like, you know what? Jeff is the only sane one around this campfire. <laughs> <laughs> That's the sad thing is, um, you know, if, if you're a person who looks into things that doesn't take the news for its face value and you start to actually look into to what people are saying and what's going on in the news um, and you dig deeper, you find the truth, but nobody will listen. <laughs> you. You, if it's you, not on the news, they don't want to hear yeah, it. Yeah, I, I if I was paid a dollar for every time that I was told what well, wasn't on the news, it didn't happen. I'm <laughs> like, I'd be a rich chick. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. um, you know, we sit there and we we have lost all critical thinking and teaching our our children and ourselves how to think for ourselves and not just following along. Even you know some of the things in my different circles that are said. Um, I'm like, oh my gosh, that's too crazy, you know, I, I can't go there. And then I'll go home and look it up. I'm like, dang. And you're they, like, I they, have to, they, do I have to go there now? They were right. <laughs> now you I got to start fighting this. On the flip side, though, sometimes you hear things that, you know, are just, you know, and you have to look into that, too, that are just out there. And you go, hey, no, that's not accurate. Well, do you know what? Okay. So, <laughs> so Snowden, in the Snowden, you know, reports and everything else, it came back that, just like I knew for years that there are government shills that go into these yeah. oh, groups yeah. yes. and they try to disrupt that's your group. That's been disclassified, hasn't it? Like, that's and, come out before. Like, and and they, they try to go into your groups, cause havoc, uh, assault, or harass your members so that your members don't want to go to your meetings anymore. Is it like mm -hmm. COINTELPRO or something? Yeah. I, know, I, I think I personally, I can't say for sure, but I think we've run into a few shills in our our activism and stuff and it's really sad because it does break up things and and they know they have a, a perfect formula on how to separate the groups into opportunists idealists realists and there's one more but i'm missing it but um they know how to separate them and who to go after well, the trouble is that they, they've the studied it yeah, they've mm -hmm. studied this stuff for so long. I mean, like, you know, counterintelligence, you know, psyops, these are not new, right? So the yeah. government has all, has, has got the, the, the formula. They got the books. They've got, the, you know, for hundreds, like almost a hundred years at least, right? Since, since who, who was it? The, um, 
Edward Bernays, you know, like with the media, propaganda. I mean, so they know how to do this. It, it comes down to the Delphi technique. And, you know, Rosa Corey is a really good one about the Delphi technique. You can read her book, uh, Behind the Green Mask. And she did a really phenomenal job of laying out how to exercise that at a county meeting, which is something I, it's one of those things that I keep trying to see how I can integrate that because it's, it's actually kind of difficult and if, if you don't have a handle on it, you know what I mean? But the, the point is to, to, to break that connection, you know, that, that, that trance that they put over you. So, um, sure, sure. So we will be back in a, in a few minutes and we will be breaking the, the trance with the Southern Nevada watchdogs. <laughs> um, we'll hear from you in a minute. Are you looking for a new career? For the next 20 years, 10,000 people per day in America will be turning 65. They're going to need somebody to take care of them. If you're interested in a career in home care or assisted living care, log on to ProCaregivers.com to find out how you can have a well-paying and secure job in this growing industry. The need for caregivers is so urgent that some classes are subsidized by the state, so you may not pay anything. ProCaregivers.com is certified by the state of Nevada and other states for post-secondary education training certification and can help place you in a job once your training is complete. Log on to ProCaregivers.com for more information today. Finally, Nevada medical marijuana dispensaries are opening, but you must have your medical marijuana card to get inside. Call the friendly team at Karma Holistic Health Foundation toll-free 855-420-1110 or visit GetMedicalMarijuanaNow.com. Karma Holistic Health Foundation will give you legal access to medical marijuana. All veterans receive a discount, 855-420-1110 or visit GetMedicalMarijuanaNow.com. Everybody needs a car in Vegas. Dollars Automotive is your trusted authority in auto repair and services. Dollars is a family-owned and operated auto shop with state-of-the-art equipment for all your auto service needs, guaranteeing quality, expertise, and dependability. We stand behind our work and parts because your satisfaction is our top priority. With our ASC certified automotive technicians, it's excellence or nothing. 702-435-1047. Foreign and domestic, commercial, fleet service, air conditioning, clutches, brakes, engine repairs, tune-ups, suspension repairs, electrical, overheating issues. Dollars Automotive is located at 3580 East Tropicana Avenue near Pecos. Call them today at 702-435-1047. Hi everybody, we're back and we're talking about shills and we're talking about we're talking about infiltration and we're talking about Southern Nevada watchdogs and, and what you guys do for us. Um, you guys watch the city council people, you watch uh, our electeds to make sure that uh, they're not trying to sneak things through uh, and, and hit us unawares. Um, and on that point, something I just really wanted to mention was um, as far as governance goes, we tried to look at it from a, a you know, you represent, who, who you, you, you elect people to represent you, but at the same time, they should have a black and white measure on, on the decisions they make. It shouldn't, you know, they, they, democracy is, you know, two wolves and a sheep voting on what's for dinner, right? I mean, so there should be a measure of, you, you, the majority can't vote to take away my rights. So we try to hold them to the rights that are set up with the constitution to think to, to things with it that can find within that that's our measure that we try to hold them to so uh sorry didn't mean to interrupt you no no you no, what you're what you're saying um you know is correct and you guys do you guys have a website or a facebook i know you have a southern nevada watchdogs facebook because <laughs> i liked it yeah <laughs> that's Thank definitely you. that's that's definitely check out our facebook page and there's a link to it on the home page of the website and the website is www.snwatchdog.org so check us out there and our email addresses are on there and you can send us a form you know just complaint or compliment whatever you want to do <laughs> you can also do that so so if there's something that you, you that you want the, the southern nevada launch dogs to help you with uh, please go to their website and, and make a formal request on their website um, you know, so that so that they can see if if this is going to affect a lot of people, or if, if they can help you, or if they can send you to maybe a resource that you may not know of. Yeah, and something we get a lot of is how can how can we get involved? And you know, we don't hold meetings. We're not an organization or a group like that. We're just two people trying to inform people. So what we, if you want to get involved, we ask that you pay attention to the stuff we're putting out and show up to the meetings and have your voice heard. That's that's how you can get involved. That's how you can help. 
Uh, okay. So that's the that's the most important thing for people to do. And I think if we have time too, something that I would I would want to touch on is sure. I don't hear talk about very much, and I don't know if we'll get very far with it. But you know, some solutions to maybe some of the issues we talked about. I, I mean, I rack my head and my brain about that all the time. So. Um, okay, well, I'd like to talk about the trolls and government shills. <laughs> and the reason is, is because I've actually, I've seen these people in my group. Um, what I do on the meetup group or any other or any other group that, that, um, that they may be in is if trolls go on there and they start fights or they start arguments or they, or they start baiting, uh, you. baiting yeah. me, I will send them a private message. I, because I'm not going to get engage them in a public forum. I'm going to send them a private message and say, tell them what I think and then tell them, if you do not stop this behavior, I am removing you. The ne very next post that is, you know, inflammatory, that is accusatory, that is that is like this, you will be removed. And that is it. And and that's how you you really have to deal with it because the more you engage the trolls, the more they will come out of the woodwork. Oh it's, boy, do I have experience with that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it's an art in dealing with people, right? <laughs> I never know where that darn high road is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, so you like to get down and box, huh? Well, well I just think, so you know, I'm a truther <laughs> and I feel like, you know, if you're spreading false information, if you're, if you're, you know, spreading your BS, then I'm going to call you on it. That's what we do. That's what I do. And that's why I love doing Southern Nevada Watch Talks because my whole life have called people out. <laughs> well, Tasha, I'm, 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 I'm not saying don't engage a troll personally because well, in my meetings, in meetings, if sometimes these trolls, when you call people out, though, y y you can get messy and you end up throwing mud, which is, you know, not what you're trying to do. Well, right. yeah, I, I try not to sling mud, but if, if somebody is in a meeting and they're preventing other people, Clearly. Clearly. if they're preventing other people from getting the information that they need to get, or they're making people afraid to show up at my meetings, mm -hmm. I have no problem standing up and telling them, listen, this behavior, and I, you call them on their behavior. You call them and you say, this behavior is not allowed in this group. Mm -hmm. You don't, you don't start slinging mud at them saying, it's you did this and you did this. It's not a personal attack. Yes. Yeah. Don't personally attack them. You just Say, you just say this behavior is not allowed in this group this is not the forum for it if you want to engage in this type of forum you need to move to another group mm -hmm. start your own start your own <laughs> <laughs> see how many people come <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know and it and the thing is is that it just it it's not productive because if if somebody was coming to me and telling me this is how i would like to you know this is an issue i'm seeing with your group jen and i would like, like to solve own. it this way and i and i see that it is an issue and i'd like to solve constructive it. criticism if they have constructive criticism and a way to solve the problem i'm fine but when they are just constantly complaining 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 and then complaining to other people and then telling other people how horrible i am i feel like you, listen, you're going off into the weeds here. My direction is forward mm -hmm. and to this issue, and I won't go off into the weeds with you. And if it means that you're leaving, then good luck on your own. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, agree, I agree with that, but I also I you're a fighter. Per, there's personal, well, yes, and then there's personal disagreements, and then there's things that that hurt our movements. And I have yeah. I, I kind of travel in many of the circles because I have so many issues, and I get a for the most part, get along with a lot of people. And <laughs> I'm a little social butterfly and I want to spread, you know, awareness. Facebook. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, um, but we you know, wouldn't have it without her really. <laughs> but I, I feel like, you know, there are definitely people that are actual government shields and like stop bills from being passed and stopped hard work from everything that your group has done. You know, they'll, they'll go and bash it. And then I the definitely challenge, think yeah. that you have to you have to call them out so other groups are aware of these types of people. You have to warn people what's going on. Las Vegas is huge. We have a lot of activism circles. And if we're not telling each other about certain people in our groups, then we're only hurting but each At the same other. time, the challenge is to maintain on, right. on point and, and move with what you're trying to do. And that can be difficult. And not get up into the little gossip right. rumor mill. Right. That That's an issue with me because I try to take myself out of it. And when people start talking about other people and what's 
what's going on and everything else, I just say, well, you know, I just don't, I don't want to agree. I yeah. kind of move away from them. <clears throat> and because I don't engage that type of behavior, then several times it's been like directed at me. Mm. And I'm like, you know what? And I ignore it and I ignore it and I take the high road or I, or I send them a private message and say, you know, I think we need to sit down and talk face to face. We can always have a lesson on the high road. <laughs> <laughs> She's looking at well, me. Well, I, well, I was going to say, not. I was going to say, you know, I'm a cannabis, uh, a pro cannabis person. So I take the high road quite often. <laughs> <laughs> Thank All you right. so much for having yes, us. Yes, thank you very much. All right, this is uh, Jennifer Solis for Mike McCullough. Um, I have Kurt Dukach, I have Tahasha Heath, and I also have Melissa Luterno, Southern Nevada Watchdogs. Um, if you guys want to get a hold of Southern Nevada Watchdogs, please go on www. SNWatchdog.org. SNWatchdog.org or go on their Facebook, Southern Nevada Watchdogs. All right, everybody. Michael McCulloch will be back with you next week. And until then, be safe and be happy.